What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com and today I'm bringing you guys an overview of the changes in Android O Developer Preview 4. I have all these changes listed here in a keep document, just gonna go through them. Anything I've noticed after using it for a little over a day, I will drop this below as a Google Doc so you guys can check it out in writing if you want. If you've noticed anything else, go ahead and drop me a comment below and I'll go ahead and add it to the list so we can sort of keep track of these changes. Now, this is the last Developer Preview. We'll be getting a stable version soon. The very first thing to talk about is the Easter egg. A lot of people like to check this out. So you're gonna go into system inside of your settings menu and then go to about phone. And then you'll find the Android version right there which you see 8.0.0. Go ahead and repeatedly tap on that. You'll see the traditional O logo. Tap on the center here quite a few times and then long press it and that's gonna take you into the actual Easter egg. As you can see the Easter egg here isn't too involved. It's just a little octopus that you can move around See, play with his legs. If you tap on him a few times, he'll blink if you tap on his eyes enough times. Uh, you can also rotate this portrait and landscape. If you rotate it the other way, he changes size a little bit. Now, one thing that I did notice, a lot, pretty much everyone noticed this. Obviously, Octopus has eight legs, so we're on Android 8.0. But one thing that I noticed that I don't know if everybody else noticed is if you look at the head of the octopus, what does that kind of look like? It's round. And if you look at his mouth, it's kind of like a cream filling, right? So kind of looks like an Oreo to me anyway. I don't know, you guys can tell me if I'm wrong. So I don't know if we're hinting here with the octopus, but this is actually gonna be Android 8.0 Oreo. I don't think it's gonna be Android 8.0 Octopus. But anyway, there's the Easter egg, pretty cool, fun to play with, not really functional for the OS. Uh, the next thing, which is a major one that I don't think a lot of other people noticed or noted around the internet, that is in selfie mode now when you use the camera. Switch it over to selfie mode, so if you're gonna take a selfie, you'll notice at the very bottom, you get this warm light, so it's got like a nice warm color light to it, and it tells you right there that the warm light is on. So this is for when you wanna take a selfie, you can get a nice little bit of lighting there on your face to do it, and I'm pretty sure this hasn't been in the previous developer previews, so this is new to developer preview four. If anyone knows, just let me know if I'm wrong, but I'm fairly sure that's new. Some of the emoji have been redesigned. One of the big ones that a lot of people noted online is the grinning versus grimacing face. You guys can see right there, that's grinning versus grimacing. I'll drop a link below so you can compare them. They used to look very similar in developer preview three and developer preview two. Now they actually look sort of distinct. The grinning face actually looks like a grinning face. There's a couple other changes, just some minor emoji updates in that particular case. Um, here's a big one. We now have adaptive coloring on the uh, notification dots. So in developer preview three, all the dots were the same color, which obviously wasn't ideal. You can see here on the icons and cells, you got a dot for the various uh, things that have notifications. Play Store, it's got a little blue dot. Flamingo there, my Twitter app's got a pink dot because the app is pink. Obviously makes it much better. It's much easier to tell what notifications are coming in. I'm definitely glad that Google decided to go back and rethink the idea of having them all be one color. Uh, the next one's a very small change. It's kind of hard to see because I don't have an older version of the developer preview running here, but the battery uh, percentage here has actually been made a little bit bolder. It's a little bit easier to read in the notification shade. It's a very small but welcome change to the UI, something that several people noticed. The lock screen also has gotten a refresh in terms of its font. So if you look here at the lock screen, the font here is actually smaller. It's got a slightly different font style. It's also not completely in terms of caps versus lowercase letters. You can see this used to be all capitalized and now you've got the proper casing. All right, so that's basically it for the lock screen update. The next thing is the quick toggles and notification panels. Uh, on developer preview three, there was a gap up here between your quick toggles at the top and your notifications. You can see right here, there is no more gap between those. There's a tiny little gap, kind of hard to notice, but it made the UI look a little disjointed. So glad that Google decided to go back and revise that. Uh, media apps no longer have persistent system notification. So if you're using developer preview three, whenever you were using something like Google Play Music, there'd be a little notification be below it telling you that this was actually running in the background. You can see that that's no longer the case, which is nice because it's a little bit annoying to have an Android system icon there telling you that you have that. Uh, the next thing is always on language detection, which is now in experimental mode. That's in the Google text to speech. So if you go into your settings and then you go down to 
system, languages and input, advanced, and then scroll down here, to the very bottom, text-to-speech output. If you go in there, you'll see the preferred engine, Google Text-to-Speech engine. Tap on that settings little icon next to it, and you'll notice here at the very bottom in experimental mode, you've got always on language detection. So you can go ahead and turn that on if you want and have that in experimental mode. That's very useful if you use Google text-to-speech. I don't know how many people out there that affects, but it is something useful if that is the case that you use that pretty often. Uh, you have new material style icons for system apps. So if you go into the system apps here, so you go into apps and then you go into app info, you'll notice that if we go to the top, go to show system, you'll see that the new apps, which is this little green app right here with the bug droid, all the system apps have this new material style icon. They used to have a lighter green color bug droid and he wasn't inside of a circle. So this is definitely a more material style icon that Google has changed over to. That's also true for apps that don't have their own icon. They just populate with the system app. Uh, the next thing is the notification for apps displaying over other apps. So you guys know like Messenger, which uses chat heads. It displays over other apps. You can now turn that notification off. That was in Developer Preview 3. It was very annoying. So if you go into Apps and Notifications, and then you go into App Info, once again, we're going to change this to show all the system apps as well. Go down to Android, and you're going to change Android System. Go into App Notifications. And if you scroll down to the bottom here, you'll see Messenger displaying over other apps. So you can go ahead and toggle this right here whenever you're using it or not. Determine whether or not you want to show this particular notification. Uh, this will allow you to make sure that you don't have that notification running whenever Chat Heads is running. You won't get that persistent notification in the notification shade. All right, so that takes care of most of the notification stuff. Uh, the next things are just some things I noticed in terms of everyday usability. Uh, the camera launches a bit quicker, so if you do the double press for the camera, it's a little bit quicker and the vibration isn't as drastic. The vibration has been reduced a little bit. It's not as long, so the feedback is a little bit shorter, which is nice. That's a very subtle change, but it's a little bit quicker and a little bit shorter vibration. Android Auto is now working better, and these two kind of go together. Improve Bluetooth stability. On Developer Preview 3, I had some issues with not only headphones, but also Android Auto connecting in my car. I don't really have that problem anymore. It seems to be perfectly fine uh, connecting to headphones as well as Android Auto. Android Auto doesn't work all the time. Sometimes it still launches the Android Auto that's actually on the phone, and I have an Android Auto head unit, so that's a little bit annoying, but I know a lot of people don't use Android Auto uh, on the head units in the car, so that probably doesn't affect too many people. And then the very final thing, we've got a new boot screen for Pixel devices. So I'll go ahead and show you guys this really quick by restarting my device. So you guys will see the Powered by Android logo right here at the bottom here in just a second. Right there, the new Powered by Android right under the Google logo, which is a nice little touch, but not something major to the operating system itself. All right, so that's an overview of what's new in Developer Preview 4. If you guys notice anything else, please let me know and I'll drop it in my Google Keep document. You can find me at dopetechdaily.com. Google+, Plus, Instagram, and Twitter, the links in the description. Please like and subscribe if you guys enjoy my content so I can make future videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.